In this video, we're going to look at performing a bacterial smear. Now, a bacterial smear is a technique where we apply bacteria to a slide so that we can then stain them using a gram stain or a spore stain. So really, it's a preliminary technique. It's a preliminary step to performing other techniques. All right, now before we get started, I just want to stress a few things. Remember, safety is always number one. So make sure you have your eye protection. I'm wearing my gloves. And if you have any questions at all, talk to your lab instructor. Don't just try to figure it out for yourself. If you're not sure if you have the right, the right equipment or if you can't find your safety equipment, ask the lab instructor. That's what they're there for. Okay, now let's get started. First, I'm going to talk about the equipment and supplies that you're going to need, and then we'll look at the technique. So, first of all, you'll need some distilled water. An inoculating loop. A permanent marker. A microscope slide. Now, if your microscope slide is dirty and you need to clean it, use alcohol. Don't use soap. Use alcohol because it won't leave a residue. You will need a staining tray to act like a workbench for you. You'll need a flame source. I'm using a Bunsen burner, so I have my little flint striker, but any flame source will work. You'll need a slide warmer. And finally, you'll need a bacterial culture. And here I have three different bacterial cultures, which I will talk about in a second. So let's get started on a bacterial smear. All right, first, take a clean microscope slide, and with your permanent marker, draw a circle in the center of your slide. Now, you can put two or three bacterial smears on one slide, so you could actually draw two or three circles on here if you wanted. Also, I put my initials on the slide, or any other information. If you need to put a designator, like say I'm, this is a bacterial smear for E. coli and I want to put E. coli, just write it on the end of the slide. Now, if you're using a bacterial culture that is grown on solid media, like nutrient auger, for instance, see with this slant tube, it's a culture on solid auger, or this petri dish, here we have a culture that's been grown on solid auger, if you're using this type of a culture, you have to add water to your slide. If you're using a bacterial culture in a liquid media, like nutrient broth, you won't need to add water because this is already water. It has a lot of water in the media. But we're going to use a culture taken off of nutrient auger, so we're going to add water. So here's how you do it. Take your inoculating loop and sterilize it, so flame it. And I start at the bottom of the loop and run it all the way through to the tip. So I heat sterilize it. Then I give it time to cool. Now through trial and error I found out the perfect amount of water to use for bacterial smear is the amount of water that you can fit in the loop on the end of your inoculating loop. And I want you to think of like when you're a child and you're blowing bubbles and you know you have your little bubble wand and you dip it in the soapy water. You know the amount of soapy water that would stay in that little loop on the end so you could blow a bubble? Same kind of concept. So here's how I do it. I take my cooled loop and I run water down the loop until it catches on the loop at the end. Now see here I have a pretty big drop. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap it, and now I just have a film of water right in the loop. That's a perfect amount of water. So I'm going to take that little bit of water, and all I have to do is touch it to my slide, and there I have it. Next, I will flame my loop to keep it sterile. Get it cherry red, get rid of that excess water. Now I'm ready to get my bacterial culture. 
I'm going to use a slant tube. So this is neutrine auger in a slant tube. Now, if you're using a tube, okay, first you loosen the lid, then grab it with your pinky and remove it. Don't ever let the lid touch the table or anything else. So I remove the lid, then I roll the neck of the tube through the flame just to kill any contaminants. Don't hold it in the flame. You don't want to crack the glass. You're just rolling it through to kill anything that might be around the rim. Now, I'm going to go in and get my culture. Now, when you do this, be very gentle. Imagine if I gave you Jello with Cool Whip on it, and I gave you a knife, and I said, okay, I want you to scrape the Cool Whip off the Jello without breaking the surface of the Jello. Same kind of thing. So go in here and very gently just pull a little of the culture off the surface of the auger. Don't break the auger and don't get too much of the bacteria. It shouldn't look like a big wad of mayonnaise on the end of your inoculating loop. Okay. So I pulled some off, then I roll it through the flame again and replace the cap. Next, Take your slide with the water drop in the center and stir the bacteria into the water drop. Now some bacteria are very water soluble and they'll go right into the water drop and you'll get a nice uh, milky looking mixture which is really perfect. Some are not quite as water soluble and it'll be a little chunky. You stir it in and then immediately flame your loop to kill any excess bacteria. So you want to get that cherry red Make sure it's sterile. Kill those bacteria that were left behind. All right. At this point, I'm done with my loop. So take your slide, and you put it on the slide warmer. And this is called air drying. So you put it on the slide warmer, and you wait for all the moisture to evaporate. Now, if you put the right amount of water on there, it'll only take about three to five minutes or so. Well, I'm leaving it on here. I'm waiting for the water to evaporate off. After the water has evaporated, I next will need to heat fix it. To heat fix your slide, you just run it through the flame three times. Don't hold it in the flame because the heat will distort the bacteria. You just pass it through. So something like this. One, two, three. And there you go. It has been heat fixed. So. That is the proper way to do a bacterial smear. Now let's look at some common mistakes that are often made by students when they perform a bacterial smear. The first mistake is to get way too much bacteria. You should never see clumps of auger in a bacterial smear. You shouldn't see a big wad of bacteria. Just, you know, be delicate. Go in with your inoculating loop and just take a little bit of culture. You don't want those bacteria stacked up 20 and 30 thick. You want a nice, even layer of them. So that's the first mistake. The second mistake students make is they add way too much water. So then they're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for all that water to evaporate. And then the third mistake that students make is when they heat fix, they leave it in the flame too long and they distort the bacteria. I mean, you just need to pass it through. One, two, three. So there you have it. That is how you perform a bacterial smear.